Hello and welcome to the Chicago Kent Evening Law Student Experience webinar. I'm Nicole Vilches, Assistant Dean for Admissions, and I'll be your moderator for today's program. I'm joined by Jack Duffley, Gina Qualter, Tatiana Alonso, and Anisha Arnold, who are all current evening students. They'll share their experiences in the evening program with you, and then we'll open the floor for your questions. To begin, I'd like to tell you a little bit about their backgrounds. Jack Duffley is a 2L student in the evening division. He graduated from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign in May 2018 with a degree in economics and history. Currently, he's a real estate broker for Fulton Grace Realty. Jack is a member of the Moot Court Honor Society and the Chicago Kent Law Review. After he completes his second year of law school, Jack will start as a real estate summer fellow at Safarth Shaw in Chicago. He hopes to use his legal experience to eventually help lead sustainable real estate developments nationwide. Gina Qualter is a 2L student in the evening division. She received her bachelor's and master's in molecular biology from Illinois Institute of Technology and is currently pursuing a PhD in cancer biology during the day at Illinois Tech. At Chicago Kent, Gina is involved in Moot Court and the Chicago Kent Law Review. Post-graduation, she's looking forward to pursuing a career in patent litigation. Tatiana Alonso is a 4L student in the evening division. She earned her bachelor's degree in political science and Latino-Latina studies from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. At Chicago Kent, Tatiana serves as the president of the Immigration Law Society. Post-graduation, she's looking forward to pursuing her career in immigration law. And Anisha Arnold is a 4L evening student. After graduating with a degree in communication from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, she took time off to be with her son and work. Since being at Chicago Kent, she's been a member of the Black Law Students Association, the trial team, and has been the teaching assistant for the Chicago Kent Pre-Law Undergraduate Scholars Program for the last two summers. She recently achieved one of her biggest accomplishments in law school when her team won first place in the Midwest FALSA trial competition, third place at nationals, and in each competition, she earned an award for best advocate. And before I turn things over to the students, I just wanted to provide you with a brief overview of um, the evening program. Some of this you may have already um, encountered as you read about the program, but there are some of the common questions that we get. So Chicago Kent actually started as an evening law school 100 and, over 130 years ago in 1888. It was founded by two judges who wanted to make legal education accessible to working men and women. So educating part-time law students is something that we have a long history of doing and something that the school is really committed to and, and very proud of as part of our history. The evening entering class sizes are typically about 30 students. Um, they're sometimes a little smaller, sometimes a little larger. Um, this provides for a low student-faculty ratio and lots of opportunity to interact with your classmates and the professors. And the part-time evening schedule, classes are held Monday through Thursday evenings from 6 p.m. until about 9.25 p.m. You do have classes uh, all four nights per week if you're doing the traditional fall start. And our first year students take a total of 22 credits in the 1L year, so 11 in the fall semester and 11 in the spring semester. And then as an upper level student, you'll typically take eight to, eight to 13 credits per semester. And then as many of you may know, we also offer an optional early summer start. So you can opt to take criminal law in the summer. Um, the criminal law summer course is open to both full-time and part-time students, and it is taught in the evening, so you can continue to work. And if you do opt for the early summer start, that lightens your fall schedule. So you will have one less class in the fall semester, and that will usually then give you one night um, additional free per week. So you'll have class three nights instead of four. So with that, I would like to turn things over to our student panelists, and we are going to begin with Jack. Thanks, Nicole. Hey, everyone. My name is Jack Duffley. Um, before I begin, I do want to just echo what Nicole said about the summer start. I did that for Crim Law, um, and it was excellent, not only because it does lighten the load for the fall, but you also get kind of a taste of law school and can just focus on one class rather than having to try and juggle while you would have uh, three of them at once in the fall. So it's really nice to get that nice, easy sort of pace into law school. So definitely want to pitch that. Um, but you guys already saw my bio, so I don't want to regurgitate too much of it. Um, but hopefully um, 
as you saw from our bios, all of us are involved with activities. I'm in Law Review and Moot Court, so you can do it while you're an, e while you're an evening student. Um, and to echo a more of what Nicole said about the flexibility of the evening program and the part-time program in general, uh, Kent has been very flexible with me and allowing me to take more credit hours this year in my second year of school. I was working full-time while doing school part-time my first year, but now I've kind of flipped that. I'm working part-time and am go technically going to school full-time, though it's still all in the evening for me. Um, so Kent's very flexible with that. If you see an opportunity somewhere else in your career, if you want to make that pivot to law to the legal career, if you're not already working in, in a law firm, for example, um, Kent can really help you facilitate that. So that was, that's been really helpful for me as I've made my transition from property management, which is where I was working during my first year, into actual legal work at real estate law firms. I'm interested in real estate law if my bio didn't scream that enough. Um, but with that, I'm looking forward to getting your questions after this, but I'll go ahead and hand it off to Gia. All right, thanks, Jack. Um, I also echo everything that Nicole and Jack both said. Um, I have a very untraditional background kind of coming into law school in that I'm also a full-time student on the main campus during the day. Um, and one of my concerns was going to law school in the evening program, um, how will I still be able to be exposed to real world experience, um, kind of build up my legal resume so that um, when it comes time to apply for internships or uh, a job upon graduation, how can I really make myself marketable given my inflexible schedule and the inflexible schedule of all the evening students, obviously. Um, and Chicago Kent has been really great in that um, Chicago Kent has a law group in-house and they offer three or four credit hours um, uh, during the fall, summer, and spring semesters. And you work with a supervising attorney on real cases and the supervising attorneys are always very flexible with evening students, very understanding of your work schedules, and it's a great way to get that experience. Um, also, a lot of professors are willing to um, do research uh, credit with you and kind of, um, you know, you get experience that way as well. You, you can really network that way. And um, if you're still deciding if you want your law degree to kind of supplement what you do during the day, or if you're really looking to pivot into law fully, like Jack said, um, professors are really open to talking you through that and kind of working with you um, to do that. Um, so I'm also looking forward to getting your questions and I'll turn it over to Anisha. Oopsie. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Anisha Arnold. Um, I am an evening student and I have been the whole way through. So this is my um, fourth year, um, longer than the daytime students. So stick in, stick there, stick through it when you guys get in. Um, but to add on to my bio, um, I'm an evening student primarily for two reasons. I graduated from Urban and Champaign or Champaign Urbana in 2011. Um, I took time to spend time with my son and to just work, um, which was great. Um, and then when it was time for me to get back into law school, Chicago Kent definitely stood out as the uh, school with the right evening program for me. Um, during my time there, I definitely went through some ups and downs, um, being a first generation. Um, anything uh, first generation actually well beyond high school first generation grad student uh, first generation um, undergrad student all of that um, but I say that to say if you guys have any questions kind of just based around taking time off of school or um, just anything in regards to what I've said uh, family work um, and just your decision to pick Chicago Kent, please let me know. Um, during my time there, it was definitely a transition from um, just adjusting, you know, not really having like, you know, a lot of lawyers around me, adjusting to, you know, everything from, you know, lawyer lingo to 
terminology in the classroom to learning how to read a case. That was all new for me. So if any of you guys have questions in regards to just kind of being thrown into this whirlwind called law school, which has been great for me, um, let me know. And that, that's that's my bet. All right, hi everybody. My name is Tatiana Alonso. I am a 4L. Um, this is, I'll be graduating in May. And to add on to my bio and to echo a lot of what other people have said, um, you know, Chicago Kent has really been helpful in uh, these last four years. Um, I was fortunate enough to have awesome classmates like Anisha. And I really think the awesome part about being in the evening program is that you are with other people that are also working full time or also, you know, struggling with how do you handle both. Um, when I was an undergrad, my full time job was to be a student and, you know, taking law school as a part of the evening program, it's not the same. It's difficult, uh, I won't lie, but I think it's important to know that it can be done. I did not participate in the program where um, they allowed you to take crim, uh, criminal pursuit, was it? Um, crim the summer before. I've, you know, I never took any courses over the summer, so it did take me the full four years, but this last semester, um, due to other um, activities that I participated in and other program, um, there's other avenues to gain credits. I'm st this last semester. I was still only taking, uh, I believe it's eight credits. So it doesn't mean that at the end you're going to be still stuck with a lot of um, credits. Um, so I, I say that for you know one of the reasons that Anisha mentioned is a lot of us have families or you know we just have other responsibilities. I've been working full time all four years. So it's hard to balance both. And I enjoyed having my summers off. So I also think it's important for you all to know that you have to do what's best for you. You have to take care of your mental health. You have to be able to say to your family and friends, I'm not going to be available these next three to four years. Um, it's not because I don't want to see you. It's not because I don't want to you know, go to a birthday party. It's because you know you have to study. And it's it's can be difficult at times, but it's definitely something that you that can get done. Um, at Chicago Kent, I've been involved at in the Immigration Law Society and also in HILSA, which is the Hispanic um, Association um, for Hispanic students, for Latino students here at Chicago Kent. And one of my favorite things about being a part of the Immigration Law Society, and I think this was really what made me feel like a student at Chicago Kent, was being able to participate in the Dilly um, trip. So uh, at Kent, we offer uh, an opportunity for students to travel down to the South Texas Family Residential Center, so where we spend an entire week helping women and children that, seek, that are seeking asylum down in Texas. And it's very hard work. You see things that um, you never imagined, things that you don't hear about in the media, but this is definitely an experience that I'm really grateful that I was able to have. And that was thanks to Chicago Kent and the awesome professors that were really supportive of our idea when we um, pitched it. Um, we wanted to make this happen and students are able to go and we get credit or we get volunteer hours for participating. And that has been definitely one of the things that I've enjoyed the most while at Chicago Kent. Um, through this, ILS really pushed immigration to the forefront, I think. And we did open up again uh, the immigration clinic. I know um, Anisha has been part of the clinics at school. And I think that's another awesome opportunity that students, even if you're in the evening program, you can still get involved. Um, it's important to know that you can be involved as an evening student. Um, the first year, the first semester might seem a little bit difficult because you're getting used to, um, especially for like I was working the full 40 hours a week and then going to school. Your days are 12 hour long, 12 hours long, and you know, you get home just to either finish up homework or get some sleep. So it was hard at the beginning, um, but it's important to be honest with yourself, with your employer, I think, and so then they can understand what type of support you will need. And it's also important to know that you should reach out to your professors. I think that is definitely another one of the best parts about Chicago Kent is that our professors are aware that you are in the evening division 
and you have other responsibilities, responsibilities at work or from your family, and they are definitely willing to help you out. You just have to ask for it. So keep that in mind um, if it is if you choose to to um, pursue this. Um, I before law school I was in the nonprofit world, and I also worked at a public library. So I did a lot of different um, programs for community for our community, like ESL, GED classes, computer classes. All, um, a lot of different things. I worked with the Affordable Care Act as well, but I knew that this is what I wanted to do. Um, and eventually now I am working at a law firm. Um, but again, I made the connection of where I am right now thanks to Kent. Um, my, boss was, my boss was actually my professor for Legal Writing 4. So that was really awesome that he, that's how I made the connection and I made the transition. And it's been really, um, important for me to get this experience before I graduate and I'm really thankful that Chicago Kent was able to make this happen um, and I think that is all I know I, I did talk a lot so we welcome any of your questions now and feel free to chime in Great. Yeah, so at this point, we would like to um, open the floor for your questions. You can use the questions box in the webinar software, and we are happy to answer those questions for you. Um, and while we wait for um, some questions to come in, maybe you could each talk a bit about, you know, how you made this decision, because obviously our admitted students have a big decision ahead of them. So, you know, what were some of the factors that you were considering as you made the decision of which program to enroll in and what led you to ultimately choose Chicago Kent? Uh, for me, um, I went to some of the uh, admitted students days and got to meet not only faculty, but also alumni and current students. And I just really liked, I don't know what else to put up, but the vibe I got from the people there. Um, and I still like everyone here because it's, it is a really strong network. Not that other schools wouldn't have a strong one too. I just didn't happen to notice it when I was actually touring them. Um, so I ended up sticking with Kent. Um, and uh, I was, really only looking at the Chicago schools anyway, so it, I could really kind of fine tune my decision in that sense. Um, and when you kind of line up all the other schools together, like compared to Loyola, John Marshall, um, John Marshall was going through the UIC merger at the time, so they were kind of outside because I didn't know what that was going to happen, uh, what was going to happen there. Um, but ultimately it really did come down to the people that I met here at Kent. And not to mention the facilities are just a bit nicer than most of the other schools anyways, um, since they, remodeled back um, to, toward all you, you have like nice you see on the picture right here you have nice monitors in every room which not every law school has so definitely don't take that for granted if you end up coming here yeah I mean I am I'll go next um, what attracted me to Chicago Kent was really once I picked where I wanted to be, and I'm a North Suburban resident, I live in Evanston. Um, if anybody knows where like undergraduate Northwestern campus is, that's my downtown. So I live in that suburb, um, and for me, it was really about location. Um, the commute to Kent in comparison to some other schools is actually very smooth. I know people who commute daily from Indiana, uh, daytime students, um, and from a lot further places. Tatiana and I get on the Metro, or used to get on the Metro yeah. every night um, after evening classes, and she goes a lot further than me. But um, the one thing about Kent that attracted me was one, how easy it was to get there. Um, two, it's surrounded by a lot of the major law firms. Um, working as a TA for the PLUS program, which is undergraduate or rather Yes, undergraduate students coming over the summer to have a crash course for two weeks, a summer crash course for two weeks at Chicago Kent. Um, that I was able to visit a lot of law firms that I personally wasn't interested in because I never thought big law firm, but um, we visited a lot of law firms that are walking distance from Kent. Um, there's a lot of different law firms. The courtroom, uh, if you live in, in Chicago, any of you are you're familiar with the Daily Center, um, is in on a good day walking distance, but a quick train ride or bus ride to the courthouse. So everything kind of law school related and anything that can kind of like foster you in your future or as far as connections is really 
in the area of Chicago Cat. Um, and that's one of the things that kind of attracted me to it is just really the location, uh, the accessibility. And um, I didn't learn this until later, but these are some of the most, most memorable professors that I've ever experienced. Um, they're awesome. So yes, <laughs> that's, that's why I picked Kent. Um, so I'll go off what Anisha just said. I definitely think uh, transportation, um, both Ogilvy and Union Station are um, really close. If you haven't visited, you haven't seen that maybe yet, but it's really convenient, especially when class gets out right at 9.25. Anisha and I dash to catch the 9.35 train, um, which is really nice that we can do that um, because otherwise we'd be stuck at Ogilvy for another hour. Um, and another thing was I had, um, friends who went to Kent and I definitely reached out to them and they loved it and also recommended visiting. I think visiting every school is really important. You get a feel as to, you know, being there and can you really picture yourself going to class? Um, and it was, it's very different from undergrad. You know, we went, I went to U of I, it's a huge campus. This is one building. So um, I think visiting and seeing how you feel is really important. Um, but um, and also not being afraid to sit in in classes. I think um, when I visited, I went in and um, like you see the picture there, a lot of the classrooms look like that and um, it's overall a nice building, I agree. <laughs> I first heard of Kent because of their um, patent hub and their strong IP program. And when I started looking into Kent further, um, I was very interested that they offered cert certification um, for various areas of the law and specifically given my background, the IP certificate program. Um, so that really put Kent on my radar initially. And as I started to connect with current evening students, I was just astounded at the, uh, just the multitude of backgrounds that people have in the evening program and how, um, they're all able to kind of draw from these backgrounds and really excel in their coursework and, and share the share their various backgrounds with each other. Um, another thing that really interested me, and Jack and I have actually experienced this, is we had a professor um, in our 1L year and in our 2L year who were previously evening students when they were in law school. So they could really relate to us and understand kind of what we're going through. We all have families, jobs, um, long commutes for some people, and they were very understanding of that and really tailored the class to respect that and to make sure that we could all succeed and really get the most out of law school in the same way that the daytime and the full-time students were able to. In our, um our first question is, can you talk more about how the evening class schedule is laid out and how it's laid out the first year and then also what it's like as you get into your upper level years when you're picking your own classes? Um, <clears throat> I'll say this also because I didn't mention it. I took the crim law class over the summer. Um, Jack, please let me know if your experience was completely different. Um, Tati mentioned that she never, um, that she didn't really take summer classes. I took summer classes every summer except for this past summer, and I'm still graduating at the same time as, <laughs> as Tati uh, four years later. Um, so um, in regards to classes, I think the crim class is a great introductory class, but for someone like me looking back, who didn't have um, a lot of experience with reading cases and really knowing what it meant to um, be in law school quite yet, as much as I, as long as I wanted to be there. Um, I don't know if I would go back and do it again. And like I said, Jack, I can piggyback on it, but um, I just, the class was great. I had Dean So, he was wonderful, but my mind didn't fully wrap around the fact yet that this was law school. It was a different way of thinking. It was a different everything for me. And um, summer classes are just a, a little quicker. Um, so for me, looking back, I maybe would have um, 
learned a little bit more before taking that summer class, which is a little quicker, or I would have started with the, the classes that were full uh, length classes. Um, but moving forward, um, as an evening student, you kind of are semester behind the daytime students. Um, they take all of their kind of those essential first year classes their first year, but for evening students, that kind of extends for us to almost two years, depending on what you've done. Um, so it's, that's why it's four years for us. Um, so in my experience, it's been great because it's fit my schedule. Um, but as far as specifics in regards to class scheduling, um, the school schedules it for you. You don't pick your classes. <laughs> um, those are scheduled for you. So you don't have to worry about when you're going to take your class. That's usually at six o'clock and on every day as an evening student. Um, so if anybody else has anything to share yeah. about that. And that's like your, your I, the R2Ls probably remember this a little bit better, but that's, I believe, just like your first full year and then maybe your second year, the first semester and the second semester, I think you kind of start to have a little bit more flexibility, but the school assigns it for you and it's typically, it starts at 6 p.m. and you do get out at 9.25, I believe. Um, and it's Monday through Thursday, and then you do get more flexibility. So, um, for example, my second, I, yeah, I think it's like your sec, spring semester, second year, I was able to really pick my own classes, um, depending on where you work and the flexibility that they offer. I took a couple classes starting at 4 p.m. because I could be downtown at that time and I could go. Um, some start at five, so then you maybe get out a little bit earlier instead of 9.20, maybe you're, sometimes you get down at seven or six. It really depends on the courses that you're taking, but you do start to see more flexibility as time goes on and as you start to see what works best for you. Um, so don't think that it's set in stone that you have to, you know, you're going to be there for the full four years until 9.30 p.m. That's not how it, that's not at all the case. Um, and then eventually there was, like this semester, I didn't have classes on Thursdays. So I was only there Monday through Wednesday. Again, depends on your how you work your schedule. I'll make a comment on the uh, on the summer program, just because you, you brought it up, Anisha. Um, but it, uh, I could see like why you wouldn't want, I mean, does anyone really want to dive right into law school <laughs> earlier than they need to, I guess is probably the best way to put it. Um, but if you're already trying to start your routine, um, the most summer classes are eight weeks. However, the summer start is 10 weeks. So they do help you out a little bit there with keeping it slower than a typical summer course, but it, but it does move along pretty quickly since that's the only thing you're focusing on for 10 weeks. Um, and, but if you're kind of wanting to test the waters with law school, if you're maybe a little unsure about whether you actually want to go through with it, I think it's a great way to to do that and that you don't necessarily you don't have to quit your job if you have a, a normal day job since classes are from 6 to 8 20 or so um, twice a week so you can kind of give it a, a try for the summer start um, and see if that works for you but otherwise everything that um, Tatiana and Anisha said about your flexibility growing as, as you go through each year that, that's obviously that is the case the first year is all set um, second year we have, I think we had three courses assigned to us across both semesters. Um, so two in the fall and then one this semester. And then after that, we can basically do whatever we want. Um, so you do start picking electives and all that stuff in the fall semester of your second year. Um, and then we'll get more flexibility as you move on. To uh, provide a different perspective about the evening program, kind of on the vein Anisha was going with it. Um, I did not do the, the summer star program. Um, it was a little tricky at first, taking all three classes at once and really just going from zero to 60. Um, but I, I really liked it because it is, it is more spread out. You do have that 16 weeks. And then by the time you get to your second semester in the spring, you're already used to taking three classes at once, you already have your schedule down, and you're really in a, a position to, you know, succeed at that point. Um, I found that that worked best for me just because, you know, it was tough for the first few weeks, but then, like I said, you get a schedule, you get going, and you know what to expect. 
and those who are in the summer star program they're taking legal writing and just torts in the fall and they're jumping into the three classes in the spring so it's kind of that delayed um kind of everything crashing on at once but obviously like jack said it it depends on you what do you want a taste of it early on do you want to just kind of get going you know yourself but both are great both options are very doable you can do good at either one I also want to add that, um, I think Jack mentioned this earlier, there is a lot of flexibility at Kent where we do, we, Anisha and I had a lot of classmates that ended up going, you know, full time. They eventually realized that they didn't want to, you know, do this part time anymore and went full time and did end up graduating in three years. And then there's some, you know, like Anisha and I that were like, we're okay with being here the full four years. We're going to take our time and just, you know, um, and we're okay with that. I think it's important to know that you get to make that decision. Um, some of our, you know, classmates graduated a semester early, and then they took more time to study for the bar, or you know, they made that decision on their own. It depends on uh, really yourself. Um, once you get going, you see what works best for you, and you see what your body, what your mental health requires, um, and that's going to be really important for you to listen to those things and and not feel the pressure of I have to get out of here right away or maybe there's something that forces you to have to get out of you know get through law school right away and that's okay Kent is really supportive of being you know of whatever it is that's best for their students I'm, I am actually one of those people who made that sort of pivot not to full day but um, I this past year um, in order to kind of catch up with day kids I took um, I actually took an intersection course, which is one thing that Ken offers that can be an option for a lot of you folks if you, uh, even if you're working full time, if you want to burn some vacation time on it, obviously, mm -hmm. like do so at your own risk. But um, there are these courses that you can basically take for a week. Um, you're just taking one course, usually four or five days of the week from just like a normal work day, nine to five. And at the end of the week, you get your two, two or three credits. So I think it's a pretty good deal if you unless you value your vacation time, which I was leaving that job afterwards anyway, so I just wanted to burn it on a class. Um, and then I took um, two more classes that summer after the intercession course, so then I caught right up with day kids. So that definitely is an option if you want to do part-time the first year, and then uh, you, all you need is eight hours to catch up to the 30 that the day kids had in the first year, so it's not as though it's you'll never be able to catch up if you do decide to actually try to graduate in three years. Um, it, again, it obviously depends on your priorities, how you like your actual job that you're in now, if you have one, um, and that's definitely a decision that you have to make yourself, but Kent lets you make it because they are very flexible with all of that. Our next question is about um, the possibility for evening students to participate in legal clinics. So if, if any of you have done the legal clinic or have classmates that have, can you talk a bit about that? Uh, yeah, and I know this is all going by 45, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna start moving quick. I think we all. Um, I did the crim law clinic. Um, I went to law school thinking I would do crim law, and different experiences make you think different things. Um, did it with a professor slash attorney that's no longer there. Um, he's actually teaching in. Well, he was in China. I don't know where he's in where I believe so. If anybody knows who I'm talking about, um, but they have. The clinics are awesome. Pretty much what they are are um, in-house attorneys. So you have um, professors slash attorneys working at the school for clients. And the clinics pretty much involve students working alongside these attorneys slash professors on these real cases. Um, and I think that's also another great part of Kent's is that they offer these uh, work-like experiences without you having to find um, a work position. And I'll stop there. This is my uh, first semester in a clinic. I'm in the civil litigation clinic, and I echo everything Anisha just said. Um, it's been a really great experience, especially as an evening student. Um, my supervising attorney is very flexible and um, a lot of times is willing to meet, you know, around your work hours to kind of still get you that real life uh, experience around your work hours and they'll assign assignments that you can work on pretty much whenever such as drafting a memo um, you know a motion 
things like that. So you're, you're getting all different sides of how to be a practicing attorney from a real life attorney. So it's, it's really great. And it's really flexible for you new students. Yeah, I'll add in that. Um, so for the clinics, it is a lottery. So it's not a guarantee that everyone gets to participate. Um, I was not selected, but um, I can tell you from my, I have another friend of mine who she was, she participated in the immigration clinic and she is an evening student. So that did limit her on how many hours she could do, but the professor was really understanding and she actually pretty much just extended it for another semester just said just get the hours done that you need to receive the credit because she understood that you know she was working full time and then had class and then had the clinic um, but they still you know that's not a reason for them to not select you and not offer this opportunity for evening students so please know that it's still an option for you so the next question is for um, incoming evening students who've been out of class uh, out of school for a while. Is there anything you'd recommend that they do in the summer before law school to kind of get geared up and ready for classes? Um, so I'll jump into that one. So I, um, I think Anish and I took a similar amount of time off. I took four years off. I graduated from U of I in 2012, and then I went back to school in 2016. Um, it definitely was weird uh, to go back, um, you know, thinking about even the basics. So spend, you know, you get to go shopping again for school school supplies, getting yourself an assignment notebook. That was really helpful. Um, writing down your schedule. Um, I think going back to your basics uh, will definitely be helpful. Writing everything down, uh, making sure that you have your schedule. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, this was very new to new for me because when I was an undergrad, I did not work. Uh, as nearly as much as I am now. So I think it was important to also to schedule like this is the time I'm going to study. This is the time I'm going to do my homework. Even throwing in there like this is the time I'm going to go to the gym and being okay with taking an afternoon off um, because it can feel overwhelming. Like I hadn't done, you know, read so much reading in such a long time that I felt like I was never doing enough. But you have to be able to allow yourself to say, you know, I deserve some a small break here or there. Um, so I definitely recommend going back to your basics of getting all your, you know, school supplies, getting an assignment notebook, and just creating a schedule to get things, you know, get you back in the flow of, I have class at this time, I got a review at this time. Yeah, I mean, um, I would have loved to gone all the way through. I actually was one of those people who said, you know, I don't understand why people take time off to begin with when I went to undergrad. Um, and then life happened. <laughs> Um, so like I mentioned before, my son is now nine. Um, so when I went to law school, he was running on four or five. Um, so that was the big reason why I took time off to come back. Um, but I will say this, my work experience, I think was very important. I've been working since I was 13, so it was nothing new, but I think it's very valuable if you haven't worked to work during this time, because once you go through law school, you're thrown right into that work field. You're looking for a job your, your, your second or third or fourth year. And I think that work experience is important. So I, I, don't, I, I think it's great to take time off actually looking back now. Additionally, I will say during my time off, I never removed myself completely from the field of law. I met with attorneys. Um, I met with um, just, well, attorneys. <laughs> I met with different attorneys, um, none of who specialize in any of the fields that I have experience in, but it was just a way to stay kind of engaged. Um, speaking to attorneys will help you get familiarized with maybe terminology, reading cases even. Um, and I'll say this real quick, one of the first cases I read when I got to law school and I said, oh my goodness, this is nothing like what I thought it was, was a McDonald case. And I might be showing my age, but um, there was a McDonald's case where a woman spilled a hot coffee on herself and was able to sue for what I thought before law school was millions and millions of dollars. And when I read that case in law school, it was like, whoa, this is a different world. So read cases, familiarize yourself with the attorneys, um, visit law firms, speak to students, reach out to us, like spend your time if you're going to take time off. Um, but Oh, wait, you guys already admitted, duh. Okay, so you've done that if you've done that already, but 
Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nothing. If anything, just come back, focus. As Tati said, this is some time off. So just come back with your mind kind of back in that flow of, I need to be as focused as I was when I was back in school years ago. And I think it's also important um, to lean on each other. Um, whoever, and like I said this earlier, but I'm gonna say it again because I think it's really important as evening students, we really, I think, understand each other. So just keep that in mind that all of you are gonna be going through the exact same thing of, I'm exhausted, I barely slept, I didn't get to finish reading this case. Did you understand it? Half of the class probably didn't understand it. So you are not alone. Um, so that's just going to be really important to keep in mind. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, reach out to each other because I know if it wasn't for my classmates, I don't think that I would have made it through. Our next question is about, um, you know, for students who don't know what area of law they want to go into, uh, you know, what are the opportunities to discover that? And at what point in law school do you need to make that decision about what practice areas you're interested in? I mean, I knew what I wanted to do going into law school, but I would argue you don't need to make a decision during school. Really, the whole point of law school is to, especially if you don't know, part of the whole journey is learning about what you like and don't like. And you're better off getting a wider range of classes in areas that you maybe aren't familiar with. Like I've taken a few IP classes, even though I don't want to practice IP, at least I don't think so, but I thought I might as well take some, so I'm at least familiar with it. That's kind of the advantage of being in a place like this, whereas once you start working at a firm, they're probably going to specialize you pretty quickly, and you won't necessarily get that much of a chance to become familiar with a certain area of law. And for all you know, the, the class you took in law school on some random area of law might actually apply to a different practice area that you end up practicing in. So I, I, I wouldn't look at law school as the point of it being to specialize, but rather it's to get kind of a breadth of knowledge about the law and then using that those general skills to then specialize later once you actually end up at a firm and obviously show some interest in the area if you really think you are interested in an area, but don't look at it like as though there's some sort of deadline looming. Um, just really focus on getting better through law school rather than trying to meet some arbitrary deadline. To Jack's point as well, um, the beautiful part about law school is you can take, like Jack was saying, anything that interests you. You're not pigeonholed um, just because you take a patent law class. You don't have to practice patent law. Um, this semester I'm taking employment relationships just because employment law was something I was really interested in, something relevant to all of us. We're all going to be employees one day um, and I'm really enjoying it and you might find that you love a random class that you're like, I'm just going to take this for fun. I have a friend who dead set on being a criminal defense attorney, took an immigration class and was like, I love immigration law. That's where my passion is. That's what I'm going to go into. So really don't, if you absolutely know 100%, yes, I want to do this law, still try to be open-minded as you go through the process, but that's great that you know. But if you don't know, don't feel that anxiety. I know when I started, I was like, oh my God, I have to do IP or patent. And everyone's like, slow your roll. You don't, you can branch out, explore, see what you really love. So. I will also add that there's, so, you know, everyone's mentioning different courses, but there's also a lot of volunteer opportunities. So I, I recommend if you're not sure what you want to do to take advantage of these um, different, all these different organizations are always sending out emails about needing volunteers. There's a lot of different organizations at school, like we've mentioned a couple. Um, at the beginning of the school year, there's a big like activities uh, fair. Um, go sign up, get on their email list or service so you can always get notified when there's an event going on that you can go and participate in. Take advantage of those. Don't be um, hesitant to get involved. It will really help you get to know a field much better. 
So we have actually reached the end of time for the webinar. It went by really fast. Um, so I do want to thank our panelists for sharing their experience with us tonight. Um, there were a few questions that we didn't get to, so the admission staff will follow up on those after, so we make sure we get you the answers to those questions. Um, we uh, are happy to, to put you in contact with any students. You can always reach out to the Office of Admissions, and we're happy to get you in contact with any of our evening students or with any of our faculty. And we're always happy to answer your questions as well. So thank Thank you everyone for joining us this evening and we wish you all the best with your decision and hope to see you at Chicago campus fall. Thank you.